thing. I'm Dennis. sorry. Yeah? Stick it on, man. So you're telling me if if you haven't experienced heartbreak, yeah. you're the toxic one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And first of all, right. he's doing the breaking. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why. Yeah. You've got such a guard yes. over your heart. You don't see the heartbreak because you're the one doing it. Mixtape Madness, I'm Chucky Online. I got two guests with me as well, right? Two former NFL football players, Jason Osi. You introduced me to your world. Mm. So I'm gonna introduce you to my world. Yeah. We've That's a lot of confidence with the Yeah. Like, yeah no. Did you lift Real weights confidence. before this? Nah, do you know what? Cause I, you, I just I feel it right now. <laughs> let let know. me know. He just, you know, yeah. man got a good Iron pump in before. Yeah. Do you know what it is? I feel like the confidence that I get is actually from how far we've come as a culture. Mm. I love talking about it. I love discussing it. And I love being around it. And I feel privileged to be around it. So this is why it's, this is why it's good for you to come. And you know, we got six guests. I got a special one with me today, yeah? Before I do that though, I want you to know that like, we, there's been so many ups and downs to get to this point right now. Like, literally points of artists not being able to do shows, club, clubs being closed down, all of these type of things. And also it being really London-centric. Like, when, when it was starting, it was like, there was a, almost like a London sort of arrogance. Mm. But when you look at it now, there's like a pool of artists from all different types of places. And this is why I'm introducing to you one of, one of the coldest. We don't say, see for me, I don't say coldest female, mm. this, that. You're either cold or you're not, yeah? One of our coldest artists we got, a super rising star. Period. Miss La Familia Spanish. Aye, 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 aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straight from Brom. Yes, Birmingham, 0121. What'd you call it? Brom. Brom, it's Why like Brom? a shortcut for Birmingham. Mm. Yeah, but. We're not from London, so as he said, it was London-centric. Yeah. I'm one of the few right. outside. Yeah. Can I say Brom? Am, can yeah, I yeah, of course. I'm asking, no. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, yeah. like it wouldn't be cool for It wouldn't. Because <laughs> you're not, like, you got to be, like, from there to say Brom. You no, know? you don't. True, true. Yeah. I, feel like you I just, like it. I feel like you got to be from here long and, like, just for a certain period of time. you got to be comfortable. You know, you're, you, you kind of live here a little yeah. bit, right? Until, until like they get rid of me, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she just made it sound so cool. I thought maybe I could do it, but yeah. you just voted me off. So it'd be like, you know, he's him saying something like, "Yeah, let's go to Niger." It wouldn't. It wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it, All right. Just it wouldn't be. I asked. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, 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 I'm good. I tried. Before I start a proper conversation here, um, you two was talking, OC. Mm -hmm. um, you said you was from Nigeria, right? Yeah, for sure. You said you'd been there recently? I was literally there like last month or so, yeah. Um, I was in Spain and it was just a spontaneous one. And I think at the time there was blocking flights to Nigeria from England, mm. but it wasn't from Spain. So I thought, hey, <laughs> oh, let's go and see what's going on over there. And I only went for like four days, but it was so lit. It's mad, right? You guys can really drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it took me like two weeks to recover. I'm not going to lie. Like, what, what, you know what, what you're doing there? <laughs> like... I just went for the vibe, to mm. be honest. I went for the vibe and um, done a little tour. There's, there's not a lot you can see in four days, do you mm. know what I mean? Um, but I made it work. I was in the club every night. Mm. I was sightseeing and taking in the country. I definitely have to go back, but you guys can really drink, though. <laughs> this, this, it's actually disgusting. He can't have alcohol. <laughs> I, can't, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hold my liquor. Really? Hey, we put the mandem onto Magnums, though. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We put yeah. these men on to Is it an English thing? It's not an English thing, is it? It's, do you know what? I don't know, actually. I know in Jamaica we drink them. Yeah, in Jamaica they have, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I don't know. I don't even know where Magnum comes from, but that's like something that's almost super embedded in our culture. So you don't think it's in America? Is it in America? No. Magnus, Magnus. It's, it's talking about something else. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Magnus yeah, exactly. is about the size. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> they come in packs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, yeah. This is a different kind of Magnus. Yeah. So, so I, felt, I felt like it would be good to like discuss, you know, some of the success stories that we got here, right? And um, but there's there's always a, a a big backstory behind it. 
So, like, what I'd like you to do, and this is a question that I like to put sometimes to, like, artists and stuff, yeah? Mm. You see, when you was 13 years old, mm. paint that picture for me of your environment. Like, what was you around? What could you see? Go, like, take me back there. <laughs> so, when I was 13 years old, um, obviously, you just go into secondary school. I don't know what the Americans call it. I think they call it... Uh, Junior high school. Junior high. So I just got into junior high, secondary school, and my mom fought really hard for, hard for me to get into performing arts school because all I ever wanted to do was music. And um, I got into the school and I lasted there for like six months. And um, I was a bit of a rebel. Mm. I didn't... I was just going through it from a young age. So I feel like... For me, that school was a major deal for me and I just fumbled the bag. I fumbled the bag. <laughs> like, I got, I got kicked out. And um, so from a very young age, I was always, like, in and out of schools, different schools and, like, behaviour centres and my environment, what I, was, what I was around, what I was used to seeing. Like, I grew up in Winston Green in Birmingham, which is one of the, probably the worst areas to live in in Birmingham. So when I was young, all I used to see... Um, you know, from females, like, you know, like, role models, like, it wasn't good role models. Mm. It was, you know, always the lowest of the low. And obviously, when you're around that environment, you know, you're expected to become one of these people. Um, but the difference with me is no matter how many schools I got kicked out of and no matter how many GCSEs I didn't get, I didn't leave school with no exams, you know, I, didn't, I couldn't even get accepted into college. Like, I've never had a major education, but I made sure that I educated myself and I made sure when I was old enough, I thought, you know what, like, enough's enough now. Like, I need to focus. And I've never been someone that's good with, like, you know, like, school tests. And, you know, some people are academically smart and then some people actually are smart in other ways, and excel in other ways. And I've always been that person, like... Give me a test. I don't know how that's going to go. But if you give me a real life situation, we're going to get through it and we're going to, you know, and, and that was like pretty much my childhood. I was just back and forth until I found like that drive. Like, yeah, I need to make a change. And, um, you know, I was in quite a bad area. Even my road, I used to come out on my What's road. The and you... Winston Green is right. where the main prison is. Right. In Birmingham. Like I used to come out my door and, and just see madness. You know, and I and um, I got accustomed to it. And then um, I think when I was like 15, um, I got stabbed really badly. Um, and my mom just thought enough is enough. And we just packed up and we just left the area and we, we went to a better area. We never looked back. And then I think it was from then, again, being around a different environment, nicer people, mm. nicer area, like, you know, walking out your house and seeing pleasant things instead of police sirens all the time, it kind of puts you in a better space. And I feel like from then on, um, I was kind of just heading towards just a straighter road. Mm. And yeah, so the first half of my childhood wasn't so great, to be honest, yeah. The, obviously, when you got into the madness, yeah, when your mum said, yo, like, this is enough, we gotta leave, like, how did that feel for you? Because even though you still had that mm. situation, naturally, you still got all your people in that I room. didn't want to leave because back then, I didn't think anything was wrong with me or my situation. I loved my life. Right. I loved the life. Right. Do you understand? I loved being outside. I loved doing things that I wasn't meant to do. I loved being that person because it's all I knew. But like what, though? I'm curious. <laughs> when you say things that you weren't supposed to do, you weren't meant to do, <laughs> I mean, just like... You know, when you're, when you're young, you have your friends, you're up to trouble. Like, remember, I wasn't in school. A lot of my friends were in school. So I used to go meet them at the school, mm. yeah? And then from the school, then, we would, then that's when my day will start. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we would, like, just, just go on the buses and go to these little places. I just used to just run into trouble because I had nothing. And there was no resources for kids like me, mm. for kids that have been taken out of education and the system is saying, no, you're not good enough. Like, I'm just then left behind. And um, I didn't want to leave that because it, it was all I knew. So I was kind of mad with my mom at first. But I was, 
as you can understand, like I'm my mum's only child and, you know, getting the phone call that your your daughter, not your son, but your daughter is like being, being hospitalised because she can't keep herself out of, you know, it, it gets to a point where, you know, and I'm glad that she done that because if she didn't do that, I don't know where I would be. For real. That's because I've why, changed. Why would they leave somebody like you? Like, when I, I listen to you talk, you sound mm -hmm. very intelligent, you're mm -hmm. very eloquent. Mm -hmm. So why would they leave somebody like you behind? Like, why, why is that system failing? Or why is that not working for you? Because I've always been very outspoken and I feel like it, with the school and education system, they don't like people that challenge them. They don't like people that are louder than others. They are teaching a class of 30 people. They don't have time for that one person over there to be problematic because they'll just X you off. Mm. That's what it's like in England. They'll put you in a behavior center where you've got very little chance of getting your GCSEs, which is exams. Okay. But they know this and it's like a cycle. And um, you know, there's a lot of people that were in the same cycle as me. And when I look now at what they're doing, it's like I feel blessed to have made a difference because some people are still going around in mm. that cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't say, you know, they shut, shut you out um, because I'm not going to sit here and act innocent. Like, I probably didn't, I probably wasn't even interested in, in education back then. But, you know, they, they X you off because they said to me, you can't go back into a normal school. They didn't give me a chance. They didn't even try and sort out some kind of, you know, um, alternative education where I could get my GCSEs. They just, they just left it. Do you feel like that kind of fuels you and what you're doing now? Like, mm -hmm. I know as a, an yeah. athlete, every time I was on the field, I always thought about the people that said I couldn't do it mm -hmm. or didn't give me the opportunity mm -hmm. that I should have had. Yeah. And I never forgot that. Yeah. At the highest of heights. Does that influence you every day you're out there on stage, mm -hmm. in the studio, in your life? <laughs> yeah, for me, like... It started with school and then that energy kind of continued for me. Um, just a lot of people just setting me back, knocking me down, setting me back, knocking me down. I stand up, I get knocked down again, I stand up, I get knocked down again in different aspects. So for me, it's not even just school, it's just my whole life up until now, I feel like I've had harder battles than everybody else. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not a person to sit down and cry. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I get up and deal with it. But now... Is that how people cry, by the way? <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough cry. <laughs> she got no time for crying. <laughs> I ain't got no time. Um, so, yeah, I ain't got time to do all of that. So now I'm at a place where I am, I can say I am at peace, yeah, and I have found myself. I can speak about these things and look back and say, you know what? Like, all them people that doubted me, all them people that pushed me down, treated me like a piece of, you know, like, I don't need to stunt because it's natural mm. now. Like, I'm in I places, feel, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't need to stunt because they see what I'm doing. They know where I've come from. If you know me from way back then, you can see the progress. I don't need to speak about it. Mm. And that's something that I enjoy, just walking past sometimes. Like, I still go back to the hood. I still go back, my dad's got a food shop there. I go back there, uh, say my, you know what I'm saying? And it's always love now because people can see you've come from this, mm. And now you're over there doing what you're doing. Like, it's inspiring. And I hope to inspire other young females that haven't had the greatest start in life, like myself. Because there's a lot of females right now out there that are, you know, a, um, a product of their environment. They're good people. They're intelligent. They've got talent. But it's not about that. Because when you're from the hood, there's no resources for you. And I just want to, like, send my message to say it really doesn't matter about what they're offering, what the system has to offer, or what education you have. It's really common sense and where you want to go in life. That's what I feel like um, drives me every day, 100%. Yeah. Um, common sense isn't always common, though. <laughs> <laughs> it depends, yeah, 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 yeah no, he. What I find interesting, and I don't want to stay on this for too long, but I've, we, I, we were talking about this a little bit, the skills challenge, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like, the, the, the practicality and stuff. And what I mean by that is, because you mentioned earlier, is like, some people are, they can sit in an exam and they can do all of that. They can, they're very academic when it comes to that. Mm. But then they are not being um, harnessed when it comes, there's the, the other side of people mm. that are not good at that, mm. but they're not being harnessed with the, the practical side of things um, and, and learning how to, 
you know, one of the guys that we was with was saying, look, like, in school, I wasn't that good. But if you give me a ball or you give me something where I could be running up and, like, mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. yeah, then I'll, I'll be able to flex. Yeah. When we was at the, when we was doing the skill challenge, we saw that. We saw, like, <clears throat> them, like, picking it up really early. You, you, you wasn't particularly there. Mm -hmm. But I want to say, like, see with you guys, yeah, is that, like, a problem over in the States as well, where you would say that, like, there's that, I know that there's, they, they can be quite big on pushing like certain elements of sport and stuff like that. But do they more try to lean to the academic side or do they actually encourage not just even sports, but artistry in that as well? Mm. That's a tough one. I think because particularly in American football, right? In order for you to reach the highest level of American football, which is the NFL, you have to go to college, right? So you have to go to school. Right. So they purposely push academics on you, but it's not, I wouldn't say it's because they're, um, they're doing it with pure intentions, right? It's, it's done in such, a, in such a fashion that, okay, you go to high school, then you go to college, but the college is big business over there, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a feeder system for the National Football League, which is another big business. So they're creating levels of money in each, in each system that you go to. So it's not like, oh, you're going to go to the, uh, the NFL because you went to college. It's, like, it's almost like, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but... Stages. Stages of business, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So um, I would say that in a lot of instances, it's not any different than it is over here. They're not trying to uh, encourage, encourage yeah. you to you know, go to school or any other type of stuff. It's the same thing in Nigeria. It's the same thing everywhere. Mm -hmm. Resources. Mm. You know, you said something, and I, and I was listening, and you, you said, I, I live by a prison. Mm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what would that feel like? Mm. I, I don't know what it would feel like. Mm. You're trying to go to school every day. Right. And you're looking in your environment for motivation, and there's a prison. Mm. What, what is that telling me? You know, and then when you're in school, we all go through our trials and tribulations. I was like you. I kind of got kicked out of a couple schools there. Um, <laughs> uh, got moved around uh, because of that. I just didn't have any focus. What focused me was ball, football. You know, it was like whatever I have to do to continue to do this, that was what drove me. But I was lucky enough to have certain resources. And when I look back on life, I think of all those resources and those people and it gave me the ability to be sitting here with you all. But what if one of those resources was taken away? Yeah. So when you look at everybody's situation, you look at your situation and if somebody, obviously you're different. If you weren't different, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. Mm. All, of that, all of that made you what you are. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have identified that. Mm. Somebody could have harnessed that. Somebody could have said, this, this, is, this is important. Mm. Um, and that's what it's about. Like when I think about education and opportunities for people that look like us, it's all about providing resources mm -hmm. when resources don't exist. So mm. when, when I think about education as a whole, most people have the resources to allow them to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Some people don't. It's up to us to give back though. Like if we've been through this situation, like I'm heavy on the giving people chances. I'm heavy on the not always going to the celebrity hairstylist, celebrity makeup, celebrity. No, they've got their position. Mm. Why don't we start giving opportunities to people that need it? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. that's us giving back. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm quite heavy on, to be honest. I just think. Oddly enough, it makes sense what you're saying, right? Mm. But the world just doesn't seem to work like that, right? <laughs> I know. They really don't. Right? They're like, yeah. rather than giving the opportunity to somebody who What's needs it. What's your CV? It, Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and so it's like the rich continue to get richer and the mm -hmm. poor continue to get poorer. Mm -hmm. And people with intelligence will see that and be like, no, 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 I want to I wanna give this opportunity to this person. Mm -hmm. and they'll be like, nah, right? Yeah, it's, it, it's, um... But talent speaks for itself, always. Like, you know, you go, I'm pretty sure, like, when you go back home to Nigeria, like, mm -hmm. there's kids dancing, there's kids playing ball, mm -hmm. and these kids are really good at what they do, but will they ever you know, make it, the percentages are small because there's no one actually trying to help, you know what I mean? But the talent's there. And I always said, like, when I'm, you know, in a position to, like, I would love to open a label where, you know, I can give back and, you know, sign people that 
are struggling, find mm -hmm. people that need it, give people a platform that actually have come from nothing. I think it's very important. And I feel like the more successful people that have that mentality, the world will be a better place. Can you, you've been in the game a long time. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I find this interesting. Can you see someone new in the game or mm -hmm. a, a new talent? Can you look and say they have it? Yeah. I do all the time. Really? I do. Yeah, I have shows this weekend and I'm actually bringing out a guest and she's an up and coming female artist. Like, I don't need to do that, but I want to do that mm. because no one wasn't doing that for me. So I remember how that fe felt watching all these bigger female artists blow on the rise and, you know, us little, you know, up and comers, we're trying to, no one's seen us. And I know what that feels like. So I'm very different with my approach. I, I, I embrace the younger females. I embrace the females that are trying to do what I do to show them we're not in competition here, baby. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We're on the same road. Y'all never forget that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I will help you if I can. And, and, and that's just how I am. What's wrong with competition? In the UK, with females, it's very wrong because there's not many of us. Mm. So it's like, if there's not many of us, I feel like instead of competing, we should embrace and empower and our scene will grow. There's not a lot of female artists, so why should we all be in competition? Do you know what I mean? It makes no sense. It's not like America now. There's female artists everywhere you turn. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a there's a lot of them, and there's you know they can compete because they all want to be the best. But England's just getting started with this whole female artists now. Like we've always had female artists, but now it's more common to see female Whoa. artists doing major bits. And I just feel like there's no space for competition mm. when it comes to us females right now in the UK. We don't have time for that. Mm. We you don't know have what time. I think, you know what I think the problem is? And it, it's, it permeates black culture in general mm. for a lot of people. We have something known as scarcity mentality. Mm. Mm. You yeah. know? We got scarcity mentality. So elaborate on that. You have such a small opportunity or perceived opportunity, right? And so what you do now is for people like us. For people like us. So rather than expounding on that, you hold on to that that opportunity. You're like, you know what? I don't know when I'm gonna get this again. I don't know mm. if this is gonna, you know, even be enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna hold on to this. And so your mentality that you have is rare. Mm -hmm. You know, it is it's something that should be uh, applauded. It's something that a lot of people should try to embrace. Mm -hmm. But because the opportunity is so small mm -hmm. for most of us, we don't really have that mentality. And I yeah. think it's a shame. No, it's, it's, it's fascinating true. that yeah. you saw that because you have that in you. So mm -hmm. you saw that immediately. Yeah. What star sign are you, sorry? Scorpio. OK. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Teach bad. me. I Tell me later. Tell me later <laughs> what that means. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll just see if you uh, the same as me. It's, <laughs> it's, okay. it's, so O.C. and I were teammates together in New York. Mm -hmm. We've been friends a long time. But, you know, he was out here. Um, he's the ambassador for the NFL in the U.K. Mm -hmm. I kind of fell into this. But all my opportunities being in the media came from him saying, there's enough room. Mm. You know, he carved off a lot of his opportunities for me to have success. Mm -hmm. He was the same person in the locker room when we played. You know, he was a star on our team, but our stars were those kind of people. Mm. So we had a great culture. I had been on other teams where the stars weren't those kind of pe mm -hmm. people. So your culture mm -hmm. as a team, as a whole, as an organization, it wasn't good. Yeah. So you got a lot of pressure on you yeah, because you are doing that. but. I applaud you. Yeah, I think as well, like, is that situation of, like, when you have the candle, you feel like, gosh, if I light a next candle, my one's going to turn off. Yeah. Well, you, you have to I'm be saying? assure of your power. You've got to stand yeah. in your power and you've got to know you're different. Yeah. There's no one out here like you. Yeah. It doesn't even matter if you do the same type of music, the same art, play the same sport. There's no one like us and that is our power. Like, every day when we wake up, there's no one inside of us apart from us. We have to stand up and and be assured it's confidence and we've got a. Has anyone ever secure. tried to suppress yours? Yeah, all the time, but I'm used to it. Do you understand? So I'm, I'm, I'm used to it and I expect it because, you know, when I walk into the room, I demand respect and that makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Mm. Do you understand? So, but I, I'm not watching that because I know who I am. What people need to do is focus on themselves. When did you figure out who you were? 
I'm still not figuring, I'm not, okay, hun- yeah, I'm not like figured out, trust me. I'm not perfect, I am not, I haven't figured it all out yet, but I'm just saying there's growth mm-hmm. and there's elevation from, you know, my teenage years, the same person, I wouldn't be sitting here right now, like, I'd be gone with the wind and, you know, um, now I can sit here and say, like, I'm evolving, I'm not perfect, mm. but I'm starting to really understand myself right, more. Right. That's, yeah. I, I think it's good to be a little lost. Absolutely. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> no, yeah. no, I, know, yeah. I think it is. I think if you think really, you know where you are, then you're not, you're I'm not looking you, at the map. 100%. You have I to, need structure though, I, I need. But knowing that is the key. Like a lot of people don't even know what they need. Right. Mm. Mm. And that's, that's a tough place to be. So that's interesting. Every, like, every period of time, yeah, you ch- there's a change. Like, your, like what you have around you, your thoughts, your feelings, mm. whatever it may be, yeah? And so like, I don't know if we ever get to the stage of like, you just ha- all have it worked no. out. But it's like, I, you know, I was saying to my brethren one time, I was like, when I deep it, like every five, six years, I, there's like a, a, a different side to me that I've learned. Mm. And that, that could be through, that could be through me making hella mistakes and me acting, acting up. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's always going to be that. I'm always going to have that, but I might have learned something within that or there's other things that I might, like new music that I might just found and I'm just proper into or whatever. There's like all of these different things. I feel like when you, when you are lost though, that's when I feel like you learn the most. I you know one thing I talk about a lot, yeah? And we don't talk about it a lot as men, but we're not going to have this conversation too much now. Mm-hmm. But I always talk about heartbreak. Mm-hmm. I, and I say to my little brother, yeah? One of, my, one of my little brothers, I said to him, listen, one day... Yeah, you're gonna be in a relationship, right? And you're gonna be in a long relationship. And I hope that you, it works out and that you are together forever and it's fine. And I do hope that if it doesn't, that maybe it's something you decide that you don't want anymore, yeah? But I said, if she breaks up with you, I'm just letting you know, there's a whole load of emotions that you're gonna go through. And guess what? It's fine, mm. it's gonna be okay. Like, cause you learn so much within that. But as guys, like we go through these type of things and we just try to keep the facade a lot and just not really say nothing. And it's like, you know, you got something eating you up inside, but you're not really discussing it. But it's like, no, we're, in the conversation of growth, you have a lot of growth through something like so that. Tell you know? us who broke your heart. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, oh, let's, let's get into that. Straight into the yeah, heartbreak. Yeah, oh, man. Yeah. Tell us so about you, all the time. you were ready for I that. Know, oh, man. Hey, I love it. We're not going to talk I, about I, this. Me, but. I love love. And I love discussing that as well because I do find that's interesting because we, especially when we're discussing growth, I'm not going to get into it now. Maybe we mm. just can, and can, have a day. Can I tell you or, something about that? Go. That I think you're. You're right about men a little bit, but men are all different. I will say, when you do go through something like that, if you have close male friends that you can really have those open conversations with, and female friends, Mm. it's uh, it's therapy. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. You know what's interesting, Jason? Because I call you all the time on this stuff. (laughs) You know know what's really interesting? Sorry. I'm I'm, (laughs) I'm, I'm about to be 40. Right. Uh Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm, I'm a full grown man, full grown. (laughs) I've never- In height too. Yeah, Uh the whole thing. (laughs) I've never never actually experienced heartbreak before. Really? Crazy. Oh, wow. Not once. And I've always kind of wanted to. It's too late. Yeah. You must be the prize. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, no. I'm, 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 you were in Nigeria. <laughs> Tell me what happened. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. I'm, 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 not, I'm not saying that. It's just, it's just I've never truly because I, I see people talk about it all the yeah. time. I see people go through it, mm. and I'm looking at them, and I'm like, I kind of want it. Can I ask you a question? I don't. I'm oh, sorry. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. I don't oh, believe yeah. you. Stick it on him, please. I'm sorry. Yeah. Stick it on, man. So you're telling me if if you haven't experienced heartbreak, yeah. you're the toxic one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. right. And and I, first just, of all, right. he's doing the breaking. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. why. Yeah. You've got such a guard yes. over your heart. You <laughs> don't see the heartbreak because you're the one doing it. Somebody yeah. here has got to figure it out. Yeah. Okay. That's what it is. That's it ain't us. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, I need it to be a gonna, I'm going to leave that, I'm gonna leave that right where it is. <laughs> Talk to me about like the turning point for you, though. 
Like when, at what point did things start to change for you musically? For me, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I got signed like a year ago, I think. I think just under a year ago. And I remember that year running up to my deal was probably the worst year of my life. Serious? Yeah. That year was the only year I've ever thought, you know what, I'm not doing this. I can't do it. I don't want to do this. Everything's going left. People coming at me left, right and centre. Like, the, you know, like, it was really low just for me. Just talk on it. Yeah. And I just feel like that, you know, you can't see ahead. You just can only feel what's going on now. So I didn't know, I don't know, in three months' time, my life's going to change and, do you know what I mean? But for me at that time, I was just tired. And like what you said, I was very lost because I know what I'm capable of and I'm not there and I can't show. And it's, it was a big, like, confidence thing for me. Like, and I just started to feel like, you know what, maybe, maybe it's not meant for me. But then the, the, the seconds, will, that will happen. And then seconds later, I'm like, no. And then, and then I'm back at it again. And I feel like... That year running up to, because obviously I'm from Birmingham, so it was like make or break for me. So I decided to just pack my stuff and just come to London. I didn't have nowhere to stay. At one point I was living at hotels. I was living in like part of my team's house and I was just back, but I didn't care as long as I could get to the studio and, and get to my little interviews and do what I needed to do. I didn't care. And I never let anyone knew, know like my personal situation. I was just there. I'm in London now, but it was hard for me because I was lost. I didn't have no security. I had no family, no friends here. Like I'm just in London trying to make it right now. And, um, you know, I was just focused on, I need to get a deal. I need to get a deal. I need to get a deal. And like what you said, like you get so far and then it's like you get to what you want. And then it starts to feel like, because we're humans, when you get to what you want, you want more. And then when you get the more, you want more. Okay. And this is what it's like. Being lost and being hopeless, you know, when you get the breakthrough, it's amazing. You can start to, you know, live life differently. But when you step into the success now, this is where people lose themselves because it's never enough for them. Whereas with me, I am so humble because I had nothing and I've been having nothing. And I grew up around nothing. Do you understand? So, like, seeing my mum being a single mother and try so hard with me, and obviously now me, being a single mom, trying so hard for my son, I had to make sure that this generation now, it, like whatever curse has been on is broken and stopped. And now my child is never gonna go through what I went through and things like that. And one day like, I will sit down, and I'm gonna let him know like the extreme measures that I've done, like sleeping in cars and you know, it just, I had to do what I had to do to get where I need to be. So now when people see me on Instagram and they look at me and they think, oh, like she thinks she's this, she's this, they have no clue. Mm. They don't know about they the work. Mm -hmm. They don't know, like, the levels I've had to, the people I've had to, you know, come up against. And, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. But now I can just sit down and just say, when you said, oh, you know, have you found yourself? I'm not saying I found myself, but I'm just, I like this version of me better. Yeah. than that version I was. Mm. Mm. Being a parent, mm. and when you were, you were, I'm just, I'm just envisioning you back against the wall. I mean, you can't go farther any back. Mm. You're here, you're on the grind, you're trying to figure it out. Mm. Did that give you that extra element of like, there's just no quitting me, I can't quit. Or is that being a parent, or is that just the time in your life where you were? With me, like, um, I feel like everyone that is a, no, I can't say everyone because there's some bad parents out yeah. there. But True. the majority of parents, you know, that, that look into their kids' eyes every day, it's either two things. You either put your whole life on them and you wake up and you just be a mom every day. And that's, that's good. If people want to do that, you know, that's the best job in the world to be mm. a parent. But when I look into my child's eyes, I want to see you in places. Mm. And if that means I have to bust my ass, excuse my French, to, to make sure that you don't have to go through what I go through, then this is what I'm about to do. And sometimes like my son, he's seven. So like he's a mommy's boy, he, he, you know, but he, he understands like I have to work. Mm -hmm. 
you know, mom, can you sit? What do you want me to do? <laughs> sit in the house, watch TV. I would no. love to. I have a seven year old, so I'm. Yeah. I, I would love you. to sit down, play Fortnite with you all day, son, but I can't. And he understands that and, you know, he respects that. And, and, I, and I do think it's hard, um, you know, for parents, any parent that has to work and leave their child. No one don't want to just leave their child. Sometimes I have to leave him for days. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and he's just okay with it. But, you know, kids need that. So it is hard to split the time. But as long as, you know, we're working towards a greater good, I feel like it's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's definitely fine. Can I ask you a question? Maybe, maybe a difficult question. Mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. I, growing up, you know, much like him, I didn't really discriminate between male and female MCs. Like my favorites, starting with MC Light to Queen Latifah, mm. then it went to Little Kim, mm. then it went to Foxy Brown, mm. Eve, Missy Elliott, Lauryn Hill. Fantastic act. You I mean, named some cold I mean, Yeah, right? I mean, you Rolodex serious, right there. Yeah. Serious <laughs> artist, right? Yeah. But it seems now, mm. in terms of female MCs, mm -hmm. a lot of stuff is just ass, 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 this, 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 <laughs> twerk, twerk, twerk. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it's becoming, for me, maybe I'm old, I don't, mm -hmm. it, it's difficult to listen to or even to take serious, right? Yeah. And so as a female, you know, artist yourself, how do you view that type of stuff? And where do you stand on the way music is almost... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm a big believer of women should be sexy, confident in their own right. If you want to show off your body, show off. If mm -hmm. you want to do that, do it. However, my thing is, the reason why they're doing this like this in 2021 is because Everyone is under the illusion now, sex sells. But the reality is, it does sell. However, there's other things that also sell. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I think as females, we get lazy and dependent on our assets rather than what's inside. And um, this is why like, I'm, I'm actually quite excited for like, people to actually hear like, my proper music later on because it's like, we're showing a different side, like not just because you see female, we have to talk about body, sex, mm. money, working bags, this, that. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's, and you know, it's very unrealistic for a lot of the females listening mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. because not anyone can just walk down the street, <laughs> cup a baller, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get that little working bag, it's, it's not realistic. My bag is like, what, 30, 40 grand? Exactly. I'm like, Ooh, man, that's an edge yeah. yeah. around with that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, is the bag lit like that? Anyway. <laughs> is it really lit like that? What is that? in there? Or is it the name yeah, that is... Yeah, it's the name for me. I don't... I, I don't remember when Jay, yeah. Jay said it in a bar, like, about, yeah, he said about, he went to go and she couldn't put her thing, her ring in the book and I didn't even know what he was talking about. Yeah. That's one of the things I loved about Jay-Z, by the way. Mm. I did like the, um, like, just that stunt. I like it when someone tells me how much the mattress costs or, like, something mad like that. But um, Why, though? What does that do for you? I think it inspires me, you know. Mm. That's why, you know, I was saying before, this is completely random and I will take it back to you, yeah. But I saw like Ed Sheeran was like barring, like with a few man, like we know Ed Sheeran and that, yeah. And I was like, you know what? Like Ed Sheeran could do the most amount of stunting, yeah, but in a different way. Mm. So like, if he was telling man, rah, like the mattress cost this, cause no one's doing that. We all know about how much the, the risk costs and how much the bags and all of this type of thing. But when you start talking about like how much the marble floor is in the house and stuff like that, that inspires me because mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for the expensive mattress and I'm looking for the marble floor and the chandelier <laughs> and these type of things. Don't, but, don't, don't go but, to the locker room because it's no catching up. There's always somebody can get a better marble floor than you. <laughs> But, but taking it back to you, though, and also going back to what you were saying, yeah, about, like, the music being a certain type of way in that, yeah, I don't think it's changed, you know? Mm -hmm. Because even when we looked at, like, Little Kim and that, she was talking hella smoke, mm -hmm. like, back then. And it was easy for me to listen to as a young buck, but probably hard for my mum to listen there to. There was just a selected few back in the day. Whereas now, everywhere you Every look... Lauren Hill wasn't talking like that. a sexy yeah. female talking about what she does and how she does it. Yeah. And, you know, like, I'm all for, as I said, women being confident, but, you know, sometimes you got to remember there's a hella young kids listening. Yeah. And I ain't got a daughter, so I can't, you know, I have a son. 
thank God. But I'm just saying, yeah. like, if my daughter was to be, because sometimes I see people's kids like Cardi B, eh, eh, I'm like, I would, <laughs> yeah. I would lock you in the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't going nowhere. Where are you going? No, I can't yeah. do it. But the thing is, it's out there everywhere. It's TikTok now, it's YouTube, yeah. Yeah. it's everything. And, you know, and the young, the, the, the younger generation now are, and it wasn't like that back in the day. No, like, no. little Kim Foxy Brown, you know, parents would turn it off. Or, you know, back in the day, we never used to, well, we used to try and hear slackness, but you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like, it wasn't... But you, you, can, you could control it more yeah, back then. Now, now you can't. It's difficult to control. Yeah. But little, we, little, Kim was, little Kim, even though she did have those sexually explicit lyrics, she was a proper MC. Like, Foxy 100%. Brown, mm. proper MC. Yeah. Nicki Minaj, proper. Like, they, they got, like, real talents. Right. Real talents, yeah, right? right? But now it, it, it just seems like the overt sexual has even, even overshadowed the men, that. Even the men are over-sexualizing now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Do, do you know what I think we, we do <laughs> lack a tad bit, yeah? Is, like, is that substance, that substance on the other side. You know, you was, when you was um, wheeling off some of those MCs that you was talking about, like, we had a really, really talented artist called Miss Dynamite who was like, she'd come, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and she was like, she came through at a time heavily male dominated, the same way that it is so yeah. much now. But like, she just had both sides, smoky. Um, actually, quite similar to you in a sense. Smoky could sing, had substance. There's like all of these different sides to, to, to that. And that came through in the body of work. And it's like me as a music fan, like sometimes I say like, we, we sit and have these conversations about artists and albums and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. we talk about some of our favorite albums and that. And I'm like, you know what? This is all well and good, but I feel like, you know what? There's like a pool of artists that are making really good albums and then the rest that ain't. And I'm like, but we just like level it up a little bit. Mm. We just need to level it up a little mm. bit. I want to see a little bit more. You hear her on Charlie Sloth that, did you hear this that? Is, this is it. And this, this is one of the reasons why she's here because I feel like, this is something that you're, you're still very early on in your, in your career. Mm. I know you're preparing to do the mixtape stuff and whatever, mm. but like you, you the, the singing ability, the barring ability, the clarity and all of these things, yeah, to be able to have that and even to be so early on in your career, I'm like, I hope, yeah, from an early fan's perspective that you come and have all of these sides on a oh, project pressure. and and yeah <laughs> and, give, and give and give some substance. You know why? Because you've got a big story to tell. Of course you can go out and you can, you know what I'm saying, bar people's heads off and let them know. Mm. Like I like obviously we're doing a unity thing with the girls and like stuff, but I'm number one. However, there's a story to tell. Tell it. Yeah. You said something earlier about OC says this to me all the time. Mm -hmm. There's a key word when you said I was like, oh I get what she's saying. You said laziness. When yeah. he asked you a question, he said laziness. Mm. Um, obviously, you understand that most people do and go the same direction in music because they're lazy and they're scared of being themselves. Mm. Yeah. And what you're, what you're saying about, <laughs> you're saying the pressure's on you, but it is <laughs> like you have, I mean, you can do whatever, right? You can go from, like you said, bars to singing. I'm, I'm checking you out. I'm like, yo, this girl, she, talent, right? When you create, who are you creating for? Like, where, where is it coming from? Because yeah. laziness goes, I'm just going to create for them. Mm. They, they'll take this. They'll buy this. Mm. They'll accept this. Mm -hmm. But what are you creating and how? That's a good question. Um, because generically, I feel like the UK creates for the scene. Mm. Generically, the UK will go with what's hot because they want to chart. Hot facts. Generically, the UK is thinking about, oh my God, that song done well. Let me recreate a song just like that. <laughs> That's not my approach. My thing is, I'm gonna do it so organically and naturally. Like, I've got a backlog of music right now that no one's ever heard. So even when it comes to like picking the songs for my tape, I have no clue where I'm gonna start because I've told so many stories in so many different ways about so many aspects of my life. I need to figure out what do they want to hear? You know, how is it going to be perceived? I want to connect with my audience. I want to release a few songs. I want to see the feedback. I'm not just going to just go off generically what I see everyone else doing. It needs to make sense for me as well. And, you know, when I'm actually making the music, it's like sometimes it just depends on the vibe, what mood I'm in. But I, I believe that, you know, 
um, music is magic. And, you know, we are putting something out there to the public. And it's very important, the message you send. That's all I can say. And, yeah. What's the goal? The goal? Mm. Goal. So my goal musically would be international household name. Um, whilst being that household name, creating such an amazing label, yeah, bringing through amazing talent. So when I'm getting older and more grey, my legacy will always li live on through these people. Pretty much like what Heady One's done with OFB. You know, I respect that so much because he's took a group of people that probably didn't have a lot of hope, didn't have a lot of chance, and he's made them into stars in their own right. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and for me, that's what I want to do because there's no point us being the star, us being the main, because we never know what's going to happen tomorrow. We never know. Like, at the end of the day, you can be up. And then, you know, m my dad was like a number one DJ in Birmingham, like reggae Caribbean DJ. Two years ago, he had a crash. He's broken every bone in his body. He's still in a wheelchair now. And he's trying to walk. Do you understand? So these things humble you. And you need to understand that because you've got it today, it doesn't mean you're going to have it tomorrow. You have to set things in foundation. You can't just be reliant on yourself. Oh, you know what? I'm lit right now. They love me. Let me just be me. It doesn't work like that. Because something could happen, God forbid, tomorrow. And you're stuck there thinking, oh, my God. I don't have me anymore, what, what am I gonna, mm. do you know what I mean? And it's always important that, you know, you have people that you can push to the forefront and, you know, fly the flag for you. I think it's very important, you know, so. When, we just met, but when you first came in here, your energy was like, oh yeah, she's good peoples. Mm. And do you feel like in the industry that has really helped you? Because you, what you're talking about, the future, all these relationships that are happening, you never know what that can, create and cultivate but when you are a good person and you just naturally mm. you know you have a light shining on you mm. can you feel like relationships in this industry are are you have some real ones basically yeah i definitely do like uk international as well like i have some real genuine friends that you know real recognize real just how like money knows money you know <laughs> real people know real people and i feel like i've always had people warming to me from early, um, and that has made me know that, you know, I'm, I'm one of a few, but I would say, I wouldn't call myself real, because I hate when people say I'm real, I'm the realest, but, you know, I, I definitely have a vibe like no other, she ain't for sale, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay, ah. I'm <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Right, man. <laughs> <laughs> My family, <yeah. laughs> Don't forget about the little people. Oh, no, you lie. No, there's nothing little about you, man. Just little about me, that's all. <laughs> oh, <I'm> <laughs> nah, but listen, though, like, you are, you, I feel like there's something interesting that is happening with you at the moment, and it's like, I'm a, I'm a super music stan. Mm. and especially of, of our scene and culture and stuff mm. like that. And I'm really intrigued to see what it is that you do. Mm. And I've got a lot of confidence that you're, a lot of what you have to offer, um, a lot of people are going to see and they're going to enjoy it. Mm. Um, but yeah, just understand that like, there's going to be a lot of up and ups and downs in this game. You know what I mean? They're going to continue to happen. And yeah, you're going to have to learn a lot about yourself in that, in that process too. But yeah, honorable shout out to you though. Thank you very much. Guys. Anything else? No, that was incredible. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah? Love the vibe. Mixtape Madness, hey, OT Ludo. Jason. I can't oh. wait to go to her show, man. I, I'm being a front <laughs> acting up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm and they're going to be like, Jason, yeah. you're not joking either. You <laughs> no, really will. I will be there up front I'm gonna with hold my seven-year-old. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. this. All right, listen. Love, thanks for coming through. Thank Proper you so much. It's been, a, yeah, it's been awesome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Love. <laughs>